here on 15 Fabulous Minutes. We love fashion and tonight's no excuse because tonight at the Metro is the Fringe Fashion Festival. So let's take it away. living proof. Uh, you're absolutely cyberpunk out of this world. I know. Too much maybe. <laughs> no. This is actually like um, this this costume is representing like the modern woman. It's a mixture of Helen Troy from Greek mythology plus with the play that we're doing later on this week, Faust. So she's kind of like the cyborg you know, hard ass bitch I suppose. You know, no one messes with her. Look at her. I know because one move with your shoulder you're just going to knock me out. Yeah, wide load, you know, <laughs> like, look, coming through. But... Go on, do it anyway. I know you want it. <laughs> How awkward is it to wear this? Uncomfortable? So uncomfortable. It really puts me into character, actually, because by the time I'm on stage, I've got these huge long nails and these, like, really big boots that will, like, put Ace really to shame. And by the time I'm on stage, I'm so, like, in pain. So, yeah, it kind of gives more um, uh, inspiration for the character I'm playing. <laughs> Here's a purple people leader. I'm not 100% sure. Excuse me, madam. Excuse what would you be? I'm security. Oh. And you better watch what you say. I don't have my pass. Out. <laughs> now, uh, what category are you in? This is for uniform. Uh -huh. The designer is Arwen. I don't know her last name, but she's a fantastic designer. And I think this deserves to win. Well made, truly creative. It is incredible from head to toe. Did you put your finger in a socket? <laughs> I think many people here tonight have put a finger in their socket. Not their socket, a socket. Scott is still holding his breath and he's still turning purple. You've got the full outfit on? I certainly have, sir. And how uncomfortable is this? Believe it or not, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's quite ravishing. Don't you ever like feel like you've got an itch right here and you just gotta to wanna to scratch it? And watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. It's like kind of Mr. Peabody, it doesn't really itch at all. You kind of think of the crowd's reaction and that's all you want to think about not the itches. Well there you go, there's a comedian everywhere. All sorts of odd and individual creatures here tonight and oh my god, what do we have here? Hello, how are you? Very good, thank you. So you've got a couple of things um, hanging off your face there. What exactly are they? Uh, it's a bit of a um, Oscar Wilde in inspiration, I think. Uh -huh. An Oscar Wilde, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, where's the inspiration? I don't quite get it. Um, well, it's for later on in the Mr. Peacock section. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, Mr. Peacock. So. You're playing dandy. Did you feel fine and dandy tonight? Oh, I do feel fun of Danny, thank you very much. You feel like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> yes, yes, pretty much, with AstroTurf on my face, but hey. Okay. So what are you doing to make that um, little beard grow there? Well, um, <laughs> stick a hell of a lot of uh, rubber cement, I think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise yeah. you need to blow your nose. Yeah, no, no. I'm here with Emma and one of the organisers and directors of uh, tonight. Uh, how hard has it been to put all this together? Very hard, but very enjoyable. It's this good. Is this the first year that you've done this? No, this is my second year and it's our fifth year to do Fringe Fashion. 
third year at Melbourne Metro Nightclub. <laughs> so how many people are expected to be here all up tonight? Approximately 2,000, 2,200. Is that growing every year? Well, we're hoping for a full house this year. It's uh, slightly under that most years, but this year I think it'll be. Okay. Before. The ticket sales today on Ticketmaster were the highest they've ever been. For oh, sales. fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what are the categories tonight? What are we looking forward to seeing? The categories are, do you want to grab a program behind you? We've got Recycled, we've got Vegas Glam and Vegas Trash. We have got Uniform. And I mean, last year was the Marshmallow Dress, one of the most talked about pieces. What about this year? Is there anything very talked about or interesting? I think um, the the Mr. Peacock section, which is another one. Um, what is be, that about? Well, Mr. Peacock from Are You Being Served? Oh, okay. So it's for the men who care too much. A little bit can. A little bit dandy. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a pretty good cat. Uh, my guess is the gentleman on my left is in the Mr. Peacock category. Would that be correct? This would be very correct. Mr. Peacock, the warrior dandy at your... Fantastic. That big thing in my mouth. <laughs> Do you like it like that? I prefer it elsewhere, but... <laughs> okay, turn around. <laughs> Who are the judges tonight? The judges are... Rachel Boyce from Chunky Moo. Maud Davey, who directed Fringe Fashion in 97... Not 98, 99. Um, we have... Roger Wood from Woodmarsh Architects, who designed Melbourne Metro Nightclub. Fantastic. Um, Caroline Tram, triple... Just names, names, names. Looking at me right now is none <laughs> other than Roger Wood, one of the prestigious judges of this evening's uh, extravaganza. I'm just wondering what your comments are about the fashions that you saw before you tonight. The thing I like about the fashion tonight is that it's confident and courageous and inventive and isn't... Um, prescribed like the um, sort of the, the Vogue world would have you prescribe it. It's not about magazine stuff, it's like music, it's new and it's fresh and it's risky and it's sort of ergonomically doubtful at the same time, but I find that refreshing. It's quite interesting how it's ironic that at the same time as we have the Sydney Fashion Week on, of the, uh, was on last week, and yet this week we have quite a juxtaposition, sort of the, the two ends of the spectrum with fashion. I think it's a juxtaposition. I don't think it's ironic. One's driven by enormous amounts of money. The other's driven by creativity, inventiveness and courage. And there's a big difference. And once you go into the mainstream, you're corporatized. What we're seeing tonight is um, a free freedom that is quite unusual and should be supported, and passionately so. So would you have any tips for those designers out there from tonight who will end up in the corporate world of how maybe they can maintain their creativity and their individuality? My advice would be have a life and be confident, um, enjoy what you do, push the boundaries and just get on with it. In a nutshell, we've got, we've got four minutes! minutes. The thing is, it's getting a bit crazy back here. It's getting all exciting and everybody's doing the finishing touches. What's your little outfit tonight? Oh, there's a designer over there. There's the designer. Why aren't you wearing your own outfit? No. Um, can I just take this for a second? Yeah. Uh, yes. Always the way. Yeah, definitely the influence. Um, lots of bright colours. Uh, that's supposed to be a Chinese lantern down there. How long does it take to create something like this? Um, about a month. One whole month. Every night, you know, every day for two weeks of the holidays. Yeah. Is fashion something where you want to go to? Yes, but maybe not this category. I just want to do um, children's wear, maybe. Yeah. Children's wear. Well, I can see a little kitty in that one. We got the three minutes! This girl looks like she needs a hand. Oh, excuse me, do you need a hand? Uh, think, mine. You think you've already got one there? What's this design here? You've got two. Where's the other one? It's on her butt. There you go. That is sexual harassment, unless it's a female hand. <laughs> so who was the designer? It looks fantastic. Um, I designed it myself. You designed it yourself. Yeah. And so you are? Uh, my name's Oslam. Mm -hmm. And I'm a student at RMIT Textiles, Brunswick. And yeah. so you're a student now, but where are you looking at going in the future? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'll just see how things go, I guess. Can I just ask you, please, um, what was the inspiration tonight? OK. Um, it's called Desire to Touch. Mm -hmm. It's about where men look when they're looking at a woman. Mm -hmm. So, and the plaster and wire are protective. Uh -huh. 
that's it. That's about it, yeah. And where do you like to be touched? Oh, <laughs> I don't like to be touched. <laughs> How do you feel a bit vulnerable at the moment with that bee in your head? Sorry? Do you feel a bit vulnerable at the moment with that bee on your head? Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you're obviously in the, cat, the hat category? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And how did you choose this category to be in? Did you design this? Like Georgina did. Okay. Yeah. And um, what do you think about this little uh, hat you've got on your head? I think it's yellow. Really? Yellow. Yeah, it's really yellow. Do you think you're in chance to win? Yeah, absolutely. It's getting a little bit crazy here, so stay tuned. Lots more madness coming right up after Blake. I'll just blow you up there. Hello. What is in here? I think it's that UV glowing stuff that you find in glow sticks. But... A bit like your hair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Looking fabulous. Wear it. <laughs> Fantastic. So keep watching. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, do you have your Met ticket on you, please? <laughs> yeah, I do. What's your little um, contraption here? You're actually in the, must be the recyclable. Uh, I'm country. in the recycle. And what did you recycle besides 101 Met ticket? Um, out of plastic, it's a jelly packet. Yeah, and it's got jelly in it. And yeah, and I save it, the plastic, and make a pan out of it. Sounds delicious. And uh, are those tickets actually being used? Um, yeah, it's been used. It's all my journey. Okay, you can go through now. Well, it's a fright, a total hair-raising experience out here. How are you? Fine, thanks. <laughs> and which category are you in? Recycled. Oh, really? Now, what are you wearing that's been recycled? Um, it's more the idea that's been recycled. It's a metal breastplate with... Um... Can you see that? Not right now. Oh, yeah, right yeah, yeah, you'll have oh, to see it later. Enough. Delayed gratification, something worth waiting for. It's a recycled idea from a 50s band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, we'll look forward to seeing you out on the stage then. Stunning your stuff. We're here in the thick of it and I'm joined here with Philip, one of the artistic directors of the show and you've put it together, the whole show tonight. That's right, it's the Fashion Fringe 2000 and as you can see it's opening night, the atmosphere is incredible and it's certainly rising and rising. Nonetheless, it's an incredible event this year and what is going to separate it is they're going live to Tokyo. Fantastic. How did you do that one? Going live anywhere is pretty hard, huh? So what we decided to do is going to re do some research and I sussed out company in space. That's uh, uh, Melbourne's and not nonetheless Australians leading multimedia company. And it takes a lot of technology as we know to go live. Now why did you choose Tokyo of all destinations and not say somewhere like London or Paris? Where else would you go but Tokyo? If you want new media and what's going on, state of the art, 2000 or what it should look like as we approach the millennium, then I went to Tokyo. Shoulder hair, that's a new one. What happened here? No, no, it's not just the... Mr. Uh, Bin. No, no, I do have black hair. Oh too. my God, that's disgusting. Yeah. No, it's actually quite stylish, really. Let us have a better look at that one then. So guys, we've got some back hair. Maybe this is the way you should be wearing it in shape of a V, looking like a fake tattoo. That's right. Why, why wax? <laughs> <laughs> it does. So what, you're a peacock? I am in many category. I'm Vegas trash, peacock. This is a muff. Believe it or not, it is a section that I'll be wearing in my underwear because that's what we do. We wear muffs in winter in your underwear. And um, well, yeah. Melbourne, the fashion capital, you expect that. That's right, and four seasons in one day and all that, yada, yada, yada. But um, you yeah, know, um, my favourite category will be Vegas Trash, where I'll be donning a beautiful silver like lizard like gown and then moving on to a bondage outfit. Oh, lovely. And your preferred uh, outfit? Vegas Trash. How are you? Thanks. What are you tonight? I'm a 
Millennium Rave Barmaid. Millennium Rave Barmaid. Oh, give us a drink then, will you? What's your favourite drink? Midori. Midori, what's your special? No idea. <laughs> God, I don't know. Barman services are getting worse every day. Oh my God, I'm dying of thirst. It's so hot out here. It's frenetic. And oh my God, I think I'll get a drink over here. Hello, we have a bit of a cocktail waitress here, do we? Uh, actually, it's an air hostess, flamenco air hostess. You know, you need a bit more colour on those airlines, and the outfits are a bit boring. This I is fantastic. I'm sort of meant to be miming the Aerolinia Argentina air disaster where the whole soccer team was killed over the Andes. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. It looks like they were having a good time when they died and they died with smiles on their faces, I think. Yeah, definitely. Now, what's on the menu today? Well, we've got lots of fluffy ducks and long, tall screws against the wall and orgasms. And yeah, it's a pretty much a cocktail of every description. So it was a bit of a last supper, last drink for that uh, soccer team, was it? Oh, definitely. Partied all the way to their death. Moving right along, we're going to come out this way. We've got this bizarre creature here, and uh, what are you, besides very tall? A praying mantis. A praying mantis, and what are you going to be praying on? Uh, some luck. <laughs> some what? Luck. Luck. And did you make this creation yourself? No. No. Who's your designer? Nadia. Another glamorous outfit, another designer, and what's your design here? This is a cyber hot pink glam Vegas number. And how long does it take to create such an outfit? Um, it came in a dream and then I just worked on it over a couple of days. So two days? A couple of days, like Easter weekend. Fantastic, and it probably takes about that just to get it in. Uh, yes, exactly. And the makeup? Oh, not too long actually, not too painful this time. And you did the hat as well? The headpiece, yes. Four weeks, and what are you wearing yourself? Well, I've got a little number on here and some feathers and a little skirt I whipped up for a performance. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Dizzy recycled the war. Congratulations, you've won uh, the recyclable uh, prize here. Um, this outfit is actually made of rubber bands. Yeah. How many did it take to make this creation? Um, I wasn't counting, but... Roughly. Roughly. Um, How many boxes did you go through? Bags. Um, yeah. Probably about six or seven bags, 500 grams of rubber bands. And how long does it take to make such a, an award-winning uh, creation here? Oh, a couple of... Wet months, <laughs> yeah. So. Drag it on. Yeah. <laughs> and how does it feel to wear something like this? It's actually very comfortable, very firm fitting, really good. And gives to the body, there's a lot of stretch in there. Yeah. Is this your first time here at Fringe? Yeah, yeah my first time I entered. But um, there was a lot of work put in, so I'm glad that it was rewarded. And how are you going to celebrate? Probably a bit of sleep and prepare for work tomorrow, which is a sad, sad story. Ah, oh, reality bite. Oh, well. Unfortunately, so. <laughs>
here of the category. What category did you win for? We won for headgear. Yeah. And this is our muff. This is our muff. <laughs> and um, the guy who designed it is Greg Lamb. Congratulations, Greg. So how does it feel to be out there on the stage and then knowing that you've actually won? Oh, it's fantastic. It makes it seem like everything's worthwhile, don't you reckon? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think it's a part of uh, not only the creation but also your performances in tonight? Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. We try, we're we try. Hard. Nothing fishy about this ward, it's the Aventurama. And can you explain the outfit? Well, it's like a blue PVC fish dress, and then I had a lovely handmade net over my head. How does it actually feel to be out there living this creation? It's fabulous. I wish I could do it again. I just I wish I could stay longer out there as well because it was really short, but it was really, really, really fun. Short and sweet, but you are a winner and you've got the outfit on. And is this one you're going to take home and wear yourself? I wish I could, but I'm afraid I have to give it back to the designer. Winners all round, Misty Vegas Glam. Congratulations! Thank you. So, what was your inspiration? Um, I don't really have much inspiration, but I, I went to a fashion show one day, and on the, the seat that I sat down, it said reserved for media, so, so I took the sign. Okay. And then, like, I was just drawing See. one day, and I just did it like that, and I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Misty, you were here last year, and last year you were a model, but this year, of course, you're a designer. How did you find it? I'm a model too, didn't I wear my hair like this? Fair enough, yeah, good point. Misty, how did you find last year's event compared to this year? Last year, it was a sort of a very warm-up event, like, um, there wasn't that much extremity in the makeup and hair. This year, they've gone a bit more feral with the looks. Oh, I've noticed. Yeah, so we didn't really have much say in the hair and makeup, but I was really happy with how it turned out. What about the, like, the amount of nudity this year? It was quite shocking, wasn't it? It's was quite amazing. Uh, it's all in the name of fashion. I don't yeah. think it's any at all pornographic. I mean, it, at Fringe, it, anything's acceptable.